The Songs of Six. That's the review. The Deranged Edition. So, as is standard with Seth Zintak. Uh, I to ask, I was like, is it Seth or is it Max? No, it's just Seth. Um, Max Orr, I guarantee you, he's making. He's just going to keep making Helldivers videos for the next foreseeable future. Seth is really good at finding games I've never heard of before. Yes. Obscure. Uh, well, Maxor is... I, I'm not going to say he's completely mainstream, but considering Maxor did like the Elden Ring series, Resident Evil 4 remake, Genshin. and now Genshin, and now and now Helldivers 2. Huh? He plays a lot. Of, like, he's, like his non-mainstream one was probably... Uh, early access one it's like the Doom type game yeah I know the one you're talking Ultra about Ultra Kill yes and that well and Ultra Kill's gained a lot of traction because of his videos and Ultra Kill I I like Ultra Kill but anywho yeah, uh, Seth kind of plays the indie like hole in the wall type games that are just really cool the ones that really in order to play to their full extent you really have to unholster your autism yeah there's that too yeah, but I will never forget for the life of me that goddamn clown with that goddamn space loop making all the astronauts go out the frickin' airlock. Never in my entire life will I not laugh at that. That all of a sudden just, oh, oh, like, ha, huh, ha, huh, and then just, Wah. That's That's easily one of the most evilly funny moments I've ever seen in my entire, in my entire life. Also the thanks neighbor. Yeah, yeah, that too. The Space Station 13 one. Oh god. Just the level of insanity that was Space Station 13. But now we're on Songs of 6. Uh so I guess we're going to see what Seth has to say about this. So uh hey hey party people. Hey. <laughs> I know he doesn't say party people. Hey hey people. Seth here. Uh, so let's check out what what monstrosity Seth has brought to the table. What do you got, Seth? What is the worth of a human life? I Nothing. can't give you that answer, but I can tell you the worth of an elvish life. 62 meat and 17 lever once you really Damn. peel them down. Hey, hey, people. Seth here. Despite doing this hey, for hey, several people. years, I have never figured out how to use a microphone. And for this, I sincerely apologize. Songs of Six is an ambitiously made, self-styled city-state simulator. Yes, you're saying that's why the, the mic quality in this years. is kind now, of imagine. different than it usually is. Yeah. Also... I love the fact that he included like the self-styled city-state simulator developed for, e for the better part of yeah that Barbie PC <laughs> of seven years now Just imagine, imagine having something like that as a the, kid oh dude as a kid like that would be like the main thing and it has a handle on top where you can carry it over to your friend's house and you can just play whatever you want on it dude it's the best thing ever game and naturally you play the tutorial i imagine most people tutorial. do the difference however is that over a hundred hours later i am still on the tutorial <laughs> this is the story of like it's very Tech. obvious collection of like the tutorial cheesecake games most people do the difference however is that over a hundred hours uh -huh. scarlet maiden whatever that one with the elf lady is who's like song. perking up her titties Flip witch forbidden sex sex <laughs> Yeah, recent games, by the way. Mm -hmm. 163 hours in, and he's still on the tutorial. Hours later, I am still on the tutorial. This is the story of Jackaton, the default starting location for the tutorial, which is named after the developer. We have no mountains, no natural resources, a sprinkle of trees, a small lake, and generally looks a lot like Dwarf nothing. Fortress. We're sandwished between four yeah, neighbors, the city-states of Tegenval and Sluva, and the empires of Starless and Ulisu. In a word, it's not looking very good for us. In the beginning, you start with a couple dozen citizens and a dream of something greater. Unfortunately, we are Cretonians. These are peaceful, vegetarian pigmen with no aspirations beyond slumming in the dirt and farming crops but for our purposes they're perfect and I quickly started an yeah. agricultural operation it's a uh, not much but at least we're not starving grain has to be processed by a bakery while fruit and vegetables can be eaten directly regrettably instead of a fruit farm I started an orchard don't know I what that was but it looked kind of cursed huh so I don't know what that was from but it looked kind of cursed <laughs> welcome to the internet 
promise that it's a slow operation with twice the potential yield. To this day, it has produced no fruit, because by the time the fruit trees mature, I get a worm infestation and have to chop them all down. Citizens typically prefer locals over immigrants, and the only way to increase the local population is by having children at the local nursery. In this game, a year is 16 days, and each four like days is a season. A baby becomes a yeah. child, and a child like, becomes Even though it's like pixel graphics, it's like... There's a lot of detail in it for pixel graphics, yeah? Yeah, very much so. Pretty cool. Pull for labor at four years of age. Songs of Six encourages the miracle of childbirth with the economic miracle of child labor. Also, <laughs> after my pigmen accidentally snacked on all the vegetables in the nursery crib, I can confidently tell you infant mortality has no effect on the happiness of your population. <laughs> but you know what has an effect on my happiness? That's Getting dark. Paid to plaster my walls with illustrations of naked women. Hang on, guys. This Nothing wrong with that. Swall, it's so barren, so dull, so lifeless. Luckily, a, today's uh, sponsor is Display. Display, Display yes. is a unique metal poster designed to capture all your passions. Whether they be Elden Ring, Star Wars, Warhammer, or Call of Duty, Display has over 2 million artworks across hundreds of brands. If you know me, you'll know I love my Displays more than any lame paper poster. But Aww. what if they could be even better? You see, I can only look at my normal posters. That's a problem. And the solution is Textra. Display's brand new tactile poster collection. Now I can run my fingers along my precious displays and really cool. feel those tactile textures, 3D contours, and selective matte and gloss effects. <laughs> I can think of several problems with that, but Seth, the way you're rubbing that is just like mm, very concerning. And of course, it makes them look even cooler. The new texture finish will be available on hundreds of the best-selling displays, and Displate looks forward to expanding the library of display textures in the fall. <laughs> That's horrifying. Stay positive. Meanwhile, he's getting chainsawed in half by that fucking shark's teeth. If it didn't make me nervous, I would buy that, just because that's like... me, you know? <laughs> following months. So, what are you waiting for? Go to display.com forward slash Seth and check out the selected designs that you can now get with a new Textra finish. Textra. Transform your walls today with Textra. And thank you to Displate for sponsoring this video. Your city lives and dies on happiness. If you fail to keep your citizens happy, you'll start a failure cascade that ends in ruin. The simulation goes down to each individual citizen and measures the average fulfillment of their needs and desires for that particular race. Race is an interesting topic. Some race races don't get along. Some races are predisposed to crime. Some races control our educational sector, our labs, and our academia. But what else am I supposed to do when everyone else hates education? I'm talking, of course, about none other than humans. Humans are troublesome, criminal, and have a lowest <laughs> sanity score of any race, which means an essential component of any healthy human. What the fuck did I just see? Oh, you, you've never seen that before? Criminal no. and have a lowest... Bro, he's like, he's like, I'm gonna eat this chocolate bunny. Sanity score of any is like he up your bed, bunny. Covered in like all of Nutella. Chocolate. Bunny. Yeah. <laughs> he covered himself in Nutella and was just like I'll be your chocolate bunny. Put me in your mouth. <laughs> any race, which means an essential component of any healthy human population, is an asylum. But they heckin' love science, which is important because this game handles research in a unique fashion. You don't just learn something. No, you research it, and then you have to pass on that generational knowledge across time. Remember, Ooh. we don't start uh, with paper. We get to that point after multiple generations of oral tradition. And even then, we have to maintain and preserve our existing knowledge against entropy. Almost every other race dislikes That's intellectualism. That's really cool. Like, I've never seen that in a game before. And prefers but it makes sense to be indoctrinated. For this kind of game. This yeah. is advantageous as it fosters loyalty in the absence of happiness. An open mind is an open is my mercy. microphone it's actually gates. working? Yeah, I can hear you. Can uh, you hear me? When I'm talking, I just... No, no, it sounds okay. When I was talking earlier, it just kind of sounded kind of like I was only coming through, like, those over there or something. Sorry. You, now we just like stare into the hateful eyes of Shin Bapiro. 
Unbarred and unguarded. Some might quote. argue that great men <laughs> yeah. are made, not born. In a case of Dondorians, that is literally true, because they appear as fully formed adults at the base of a mountain. For this reason, the only way to get Dondorians is by immigration. They're good at mining, they're good at Minecraft, they're basically dwarves. The Tilapi are forest-dwelling elves. They're good with trees, and they're good with nature. What else? They're also known for violating human men for several days before they cannibalize them. Holy shit. That's disturbing. I mean... Uh, uh. Bizarrely, this makes them compatible with a cave-dwelling Garfimi, who are effectively bug men. What they lack in skill, they make up for with raw numbers. And there's nothing bugs enjoy more than plucking limbs from the other races. And while most cities will have a mixed population, some races don't get along with anyone. The Amevia are coastal-dwelling lizard men. Too, They're uniquely xenophobic and incompatible with other races, which is offset by their impressive physique and high lifespan. If you want a true monocultural no. Chad or Zuckerberg. <laughs> no. Isolationist experience, try the lizards. Finally, there are Love two you. giant races you can't normally get. The in-lore explanation is that their populations have been decimated over the course of several great wars. If you control a region containing a haven and satisfy their like high they demand... like they were decimating. Yeah, because just watch the bodies go flying as they, like, try to... It's like they're running into a wall. <laughs> yeah, and that wall smacks back it's like great oh, wars. Oh, if you oh. control a region <laughs> containing a haven and satisfy their high demands, they can be convinced to join your cause. Hey. While they have many differences, they do share a common trait. They're fucking gigantic and make for the best they shock troops in the entire game. There's a bit of an irony in a sense that uh, they're incredibly rare and almost extinct, and the best thing they're good at is getting even more extinct. The Argonash are spider leviathans <laughs> with a voracious appetite. They don't care for anything except food, which may sound simple until you realize the logistical nightmare of providing four meals a day to every person on the map. The Cantors may ask for more up front, but they're easier to satisfy. Generally, once I arrested two people at the same time, but only had one courtroom. One of the two arrested thieves had no legal representation. They considered this a complete breakdown of my legal system and left in disgust. But at the time, I knew none of this. I was a young blood, desperate to turn a profit and expand my settlement. YouTubers <laughs> are a prime example of making the most amount of money with the least amount of skill and intellect. In a fair society... Yes. You are welcome. Which is which isn't people much people money for in us. The no. <laughs> dying of black lung. Appropriately, I simulated this by importing Garfimi slaves and renaming them to my favorite content creators. I invested. Wait a second. In Garfimi slaves and renamed for our essay on The Witcher. <laughs> them to my favorite. Pyrocynical is no longer ironic. Oh. Content creators. I'm surrounded by nonsense. I invested so much into this coal mining operation only to find out I've spent several in-game years for a tar pit with 30% efficiency. It wasn't just unprofitable, but because of the size and scale, the cost of maintenance alone sent me into the red. On the other hand, I found out slavery is actually quite well received, as my citizens enjoy a slave population so long as it's not their own. My settlement grew, and unfortunately, crime had become an issue. Another mm. day, another flashing. The people lived in... Flashing? Really? <laughs> just, it's just like, look at my goods! Few look at my arrests head. had to be made, but because I spread myself so thin, I didn't have For me, I always imagine like how pathetic flashers are, because that one movie with Seth Rogen, Observe and Report, because that was like the whole like crux of like why he got involved in the first place. He was just like, there was a flasher going around, and... He's just like, what do you think, whore? Just like to all the women. And then there was um, Anna Faris, uh, who Seth Rogen had the hots for in the movie. He basically flashed her and just started like, like spanking it right in front of her. To be like, he's like, he's like, he's like, what do you think, you little whore? What do you think? And then all of a sudden she starts screaming, and he's just like, and Seth Rogen, he's like, it is my expert opinion that I need to be guarding her at all times because I'm afraid that this man is going, that this flasher is going to come back, he's going to find out where she lives, and he's going to kill her. Oh my god, I'm going to die! 
And he's and he's like, no, 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 you're not going to die. As long as I'm watching after you, nothing bad's gonna happen. And then, yeah, it's just a whole thing. Have the resources or manpower to enforce it. And so the public indecency continued until I increased my coverage. And after the prison started filling up, I am forced to make a difficult statement. Dundorians are sex pests. Of the five indecent exposers, all five have been dwarves. I have no further comment. At this point, I was losing capital by exporting furniture. This game doesn't have a fixed economy. Trade prices fluctuate and work on the rules of supply and demand. Basically, if you can make your own, it's just that's the dwarves running encouraged. around, if probably getting too drunk and just being like, "Rick Hunter." Oh. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> but over trading a commodity can apply disproportionate pressure on the value, which is minimized by the number of trade partners. So if you want money, you better diversify. But if you don't, poverty also has its advantages. Well, I would much rather have a society where everyone has enough to eat rather than everyone just live in poverty and just be happy about it. I mean, once again, it goes back to the paradox of plenty. If you have just one commodity in your, like, in your, uh, like, economy, then odds are you're going to get fucked over. Because, I hate to say it, but not all commodities will stay at, like, they're at where they're at. You have to diversify your economy so that you can stand on your own and you don't have to depend on just the one thing. Mm -hmm. It's why it's why utopia is like like Wakanda would never work. It's uh, it's the reason why utopia is like Venezuela failed. I mean, outside of other things, and we we'll, and we could get into that, but I don't want. If our treasury yeah, is empty and we're dead broke, guess what? Our diplomatic gifts mean a whole lot oh, more, Jesus which is Christ. important because if our reputation oh, drops geez. to zero with any of the four factions bordering us, we're getting invaded. And with a current standing army of zero men, I don't fancy my chances. So I would intentionally dip my savings into the red, plead, cry, and defecate in front of my neighbors, and a pathetic display made me an unattractive target for assault. I would reputation farm into the multiple thousands so I could reliably forget about it for the next day dozen years while hmm. enjoying the benefits of almost zero taxation on all trade. This gave me a lot of time to experiment and figure out what I'm doing. Firstly, I tried mining gemstone. Subsequently, I failed at mining gemstone. Instead, I used the Hell natural shoot. fertility of Jacketon and turned it into an opium plantation. I still <laughs> had a lot of Garfimi slaves left over and put them to work in fields of poppies and cotton. However, I got overly ambitious and my bugs got a little rowdy. There is no other situation where the following words can be said. The cotton pickers are having another uprising. So I... I don't have a drink, but if I did, I, 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 oh, that is just too much. <laughs> you gonna bail that cotton there, boy? It's unfortunate. <laughs> I was gonna say, was the leader of this revolt, of this, like, cotton picker revolt named Toby? Jesus. Yeah. Subsequently, we abolished the practice. Not on moral grounds, but because they robbed my throne and took just about everything. Happiness was at an all-time low among my Dundorians, so I tried producing alcohol and opened a tavern. Demand outstripped supply. Access was terrible and supplies were so low that it just made them angrier. So I tried satisfying food preference instead. Mushrooms, fish, complex proteins. Then I restricted everyone to just eating bread and they were happier. Additionally, I tried introducing fine dining in the form of restaurants. Man. And all those off the game. Mm, I agree, but at the same time, it's better than starving to death. To a public riot. Not only did I fail to meet supply, but each time I did so, a citizen would starve, spiraling into a vicious loop. Their desire for the Mick menu was so strong that it overrode their survival instinct to eat street food, preferring instead the embrace of death. This was not a plague of famine. It was a plague of choice. After the many <laughs> lessons learned, alcohol is haram, cooking is forbidden, and our entire food pyramid is bread. Finally, I did make a breakthrough in citizen satisfaction. It turns out that when I select and look at a random peasant, they are not meant to be caked in shit. And only after building bathhouses 40 hours into the game did I make that connection. <laughs> I was wondering why so many people looked like that. Yeah, well, once again, it... Having like having like 
well, okay, Dr. Stone, that's what you need to look to in order to build a proper society. Number one, you need ways to disinfect. Soap is very important. Bathing is very important. Food is very important. You need to focus on the things that matter most before you get into trying to do like economic, like economic whirlwinds, like industrialization, coal mining, gem mining, all that. Because if your citizens are unhappy, then they're not going to want to do shit for you. That's just a base. That's just a baseline. Around this time, I also realized, after reading the tooltip, the reason for my insane cost of maintenance. You see, buildings have walls. Walls increase isolation. I did not build any walls. Do I have to rebuild my entire city? Yes, I did. I rebuilt the whole Crap. thing. And I learned to love <laughs> city planning. Building design is incredibly fun, and there's no greater satisfaction than having an elegantly designed lavatory for optimal shitting, pissing, and sharding. In the end... <laughs> I was gonna say the bro the bro shitters. I would have like literally like rows of like shitters where they're facing each other and they're just like if two bros are shitting and all of a sudden it's just like it's just like bro this is gonna be a hard one bro I'm gonna need you on this one. Well fuck you bro Stop talking to me while I'm pooping <laughs> <laughs> Told you about the one where the like the dude was pooping and I let and I thought I was alone in the bathroom, and I just let one rip. I'm like at the urinal. I really had to piss. And as I I'm could saying, imagine though what you were saying actually, like Gintama. Yeah, <laughs> but I was standing there. I was taking a piss, and all of a sudden I really had to fart. And I, was, I thought I was alone in the bathroom. I was just like, all right. <sighs> all of a sudden I hear from one of the stalls. Nice. <laughs> and I'm like, thanks, I guess. I thought I was alone. He's like, hey, man, I've been in here like the last 15 minutes. Trust me. That's been more entertainment than what I've had. I can imagine the dude just sitting there like, ah! Ah! Like, like they're powering up and drinking. Power RC, dumping. But they're trying, to, they're trying to poof. Yeah, power <laughs> dumping. Oh, God. And you take so much pride in what you've built. Am I coping? Yes, absolutely. But after numerous trials and tribulations, I had a stable, diversified economy and a series of shacks resembling civilization. Also, I promoted a four-year-old to become an ability. <laughs> Was that Asmund Gold's room? Resembling civilization. No, no, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it could be... Wait. Yeah, it is. I think this is Aspen's room. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I think brother. I think that's what it looks like when he has it cleaned up recently. God damn, dude. Look at this. I thought I had a lot of cans on my desk right now. I only have like seven. It's like his little snack thing here. So I try to do a thing. Like when I get to like seven cans, I try to do a thing where like at the very least, if I don't take them all out at one time, I get rid of three before I bring one in, you know? My God. So, that way they'll be gone by the time I bring in a couple more drinks. I have gotten a lot better at throwing stuff away and like... At also, dude, what the fuck are you doing drinking mug root beer? That is... That shit tastes like toothpaste. Get it away from me. I like mug root beer. It's pretty good. I don't think it tastes like toothpaste. Barks. Barks all day. What? Oh, barks. Oh. It's like, why is he, why is he making a dog noise? Like, yeah. It's because I always misread that uh, logo and thought it was Bards. <laughs> yeah, like I realized when I was like 25 or something like that, that I was like, wait, that's a Q, isn't it? Yeah. I was going to say, everyone out there, what's that, your favorite root that beer? That is the best kind, yeah. Um, but Mug is good. I don't, I don't I've, never, I've never I've liked that. Mug. I've never liked it. Blech. Also, I promoted a four-year-old to become nobility. Because it's funny, nobles provide a variety of beneficial effects, and currently they're a work in progress. Or, as the developer translated to me, they cannot oh, betray you. My favorite frosty, yeah. though. Frosty's the best kind. Okay. It's even better than Barks. Everything was calm and peaceful until we found a Cretonian with his eyes scooped out. On the body was a note signed Jake the Invincible. Holy shit. Wow. 
claiming that he's saving lives on God. Our city had a serious But he's saving lives. His forgotten. His forgotten God is the mouse lady from the rescuers. Y you mean Chippendale Rescue Rangers? Oh yeah. Yeah, I forget. I forget her name. No. I know there was Chippendale, Zipper, Monterey Jack, and damn. Was her name Gadget? I think so. Or am I thinking of something else? Hold on. Dang it. Now I gotta... Now I gotta... So I think she's like the mechanic for the plane, right? She is. Oh, no. She's their mechanic for everything. I think her name's Gadget, though. Chippendale. Rescue Rangers. Ch -ch 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 Assuming this is another thing like Lola... When there's danger. Lola Bonnie or whatever that people are being weird about. Oh, my God. Ugh. There it is, Chippendale's Rescue Rangers. The fact that you know you've got Indiana Jones and Tom S or and uh, like Hawaii Hawaii Five O as their mm -hmm. like main looks, I always thought that was really cool. Gadget. Yep. G oh, was Gadget right. Hack Wrench. Okay. I did not ever know her last name. But I do yeah. Gadget. I remember that. Uh, yeah, Corey Burton. At is yeah. Monterey Jack the the big guy? Yes. Monty. Yeah. Yeah, Mon yeah, the bigger bigger dude. Called Cheezer by his mother. He's an Australian. He's a he was Australian. I always uh, he always had a fa anytime someone brought up cheese, he's like cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, that was that. Oh gosh, that Chippendale Rescue Rangers was really good. Uh, all right. On God, our city had a serial killer. Another day, another victim found dead, eye sockets empty. Every victim Whoa. was a Cretonian, and this was clearly a racially targeted crime. Terror ruled the streets, and we had no leads. It wasn't until a passerby claimed to see a Cretonian woman fleeing the scene. This information didn't add up, but we tortured a confession out of them, and they pleaded guilty to all crimes. The serial killings promptly stopped. Jake the Invincible was identified to be a middle-aged Cretonian woman predating on her own people. Damn. Well, no, that's the thing. Serial killers often go after, like, like they often murder within their their sphere of, like, knowledge. Uh, it's just like, here, here's the thing. I, I, the it's show Mindhunters pretty covers pretty genius it. to give yourself a name of, like, the opposite sex to throw people off the trail to. <laughs> well, yeah. But uh, the, the show Mindhunters covers it in terms of, like, FBI criminal profiling. And yeah, it's it, it's terrifying how like how accurate like some of the criminal profiles are when it comes to like no. Now I know there's gonna be people saying like some people are gonna ask like, are you saying Wayne Williams was guilty? Yes, but I don't think Wayne Williams was the only one involved in the Atlanta murder spree. I do not, for the life of me. I there was no idea what you're talking about. Wayne, there was a murder spree in Atlanta. It was like 28 victims. And there was one thing, there was one, like, person who was, like, the go-to. They did a bunch of research and everything, and they showed that any time, like, the neighbor, they went to all the neighborhoods where all the kids were, still, were, were taken. And here's the thing, all the kids that were taken and killed were black. And everyone in the, like, all the black leaders thought it was the Klan. The Klan, turns out it wasn't them at all. Because uh, here's the thing, any time, like, whenever the, like, kids, they went to, like, where the kids were last seen, and they were all in public places. So they went up, they try, they basically had uh, one of the agents, who was white, try to go up to the kids and just, like, you know, lure them, like, just be like, hey, kid, hey, here's, like, I got candy here, like, like you, you want a piece and all that? And immediately, like, three or four people noticed this from, like, the, from, like, the housing project and started yelling down to them, hey, 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 you get away from that kid. You get away from that kid. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Get away. And then all of a sudden, he, he would put his hands up, he'd back away, and he would leave. And then they would bring in someone who was black. And not only did the kid get the candy... Nobody cared that, you know, the kid, like, got the candy from a stranger. Because but, they trust everybody. Well... It looks like they live there. Well, and here's the other thing, too. The kid got taken by the guy 
like the aid, the other agent who was black, and they took him, got him in a car, and drove off, and no one said a friggin' word. And here's what they found out. Wayne Williams was, like, present at basically where all of the kids were taken, and they found DNA evidence to connect him to at least two of the murders, but... Uh, the 28 other murders, there was nothing concrete to tie him to it. And here was the thing that they determined. Wayne Williams was part of the circle, but he wasn't, like, he wasn't the only one. That's my determination. Wayne Williams lured these kids in, took them to where the men who were involved in this, like, circle wanted them to be, and Wayne participated but I don't think he was the figurehead of it. Uh-huh. It's terrifying, man. Yeah. And anyone out there who wants to watch Mindhunters, I really wish they would have got a, a final season. But they never did because Netflix just couldn't make up their mind. Anyway. We sent the killer into the arena to be chopped into pieces for the spectacle of a crowd. We gave their body as much respect Fair. as it deserved. We pissed on it and dumped it into a mass grave. Serial killings are rare, Fair. and they're not often so straightforward. You might get the wrong guy and torture out a false confession, or the trail simply goes cold from lack of evidence. Uh. Eventually, beyond exports and fields of opium, I found the most lucrative source of cash. I would intentionally reduce my army down to zero to try and entice rebels to attack my city. The moment this happens, I hire mercenaries, crush the invaders, and sell off their loot for fat stacks. This set me <laughs> sounds like a really, really cool version of, like, Civ. Yeah. This is... this Just is the details on stuff they have in this is, like, pretty mind-blowing, it looks like. No doubt. And, but it also, yet again, it looks like one of those games where, like, if I tried to play it myself, I don't think I'd get very far. Well, I just think it would break me. Well, learn from the mistakes of Seth break and my just brain, you know? Yeah, learn from the mistakes of Seth well, and part just of it be is better. linking what mistakes he's teaching us about to the actual gameplay mechanics and like remembering all the stuff that you have to do to just play it because it looks complicated. Well, just remember sanitation, food, and commerce, though, like okay. sanitation, food, and commerce. What buttons do I press to make those things happen? <laughs> it's like my problem I'm gonna have, probably. Fair enough. Borderline broke to half a million in the bag. Now, hiring mercenaries is incredibly expensive. Paying them is even more expensive, but they handle their own supplies and they're instantaneous. I use them to conquer a neutral region, and as I did, my brain expanded and my neurons started firing because suddenly, I can hire more. For each region mm. under my control, I get access to five extra mercenary companies. So I hatched a plan. Take all my money, raise an army of mercenaries, and conquer Winsta, the weakest nation I could find nearby. With each city taken, my numbers increased, eventually laying siege to their capital. I sold everything to keep those mercenaries paid. I almost ran out of money. If that siege lasted a day longer than it did, I would have lost. But in the end, mm. it was worth it because I reached the max limit of mercenary companies and I could now recruit enough men to overpower anyone. Problem is, they're asking for 750k up front with a daily fee of 100k. Soldiers of fortune have a steep asking price. But yes. what if the Golden Horde could pay for itself? I've been on the back foot of negotiations, pleading and groveling to my neighbors for mercy until now. Selling my spoils, I muster a short-lived but massive army, declare war, intercept their army, and immediately sue for peace, to which they have no option but to accept my favorable terms. The best part <laughs> about shotgun diplomacy is you already know the answer each time because once they surrender we do it again until we empty their entire treasury <laughs> they just paid for their own demise the century of humiliation was over as jacketon turned on their allies no longer will i be extorted each time it's their nephew's birthday tegenval and sluva were too small to resist the elvish empire of starless literally North become was like a an story evil but led to the development of strategies yes I'd i mean He's doing what he, he he's basically pulling like he's the became full like because it's like yeah we have to offer like a yearly tribute to these guys and they come and they fuck up some of our soldiers and then they ask if we want to pay them to go away and we say yes 
but we're running out of money. What are we going to do when we run out of money? And he's like, oh, you've run out of money? Well, time to die. Exactly. It's like, damn, man. Like, there would usually be a protagonist coming in to help you at this point, but mm, I don't think it works that way in real life. No. Replicate going forward. Economic hyperwar is the act of manipulating Say in real life, decisions this is a that video game, but you get what I mean. No, I get what you're saying. Official <laughs> while destroying them internally. We invade cities, sell them back to the enemy, only to invade them again. Then we use them as bartering <laughs> chips for other cities. Take control of those cities, demolish the walls, and advance our front line. We remove the need for extended siege and reduce the enemy to a single fight. There was only one exception to this. As luck would have it, the the human empire of Ulisu to the south had the largest standing <laughs> army in the world. Even if I recruited every mercenary, I would still be outnumbered two to one. So I drained his treasury and I weighed it. Eventually, he could no longer afford to maintain his army and fell like the rest of them. Jacketon lives by a simple proverb, feed the earth and it will feed you. But we fed the earth so much that nature herself is vomiting up red. There's too many prisoners of war and not enough mass graves to go around. The rest Jesus. is morbid history as I took the rest of the map. Jacketon is now the single state empire of the world. Resources are limitless. Currency is infinite. For we possess an infinite money printer, the design of which is as follows. I form a puppet state, declare war on them, take all their money from a peace treaty, invade them anyway, and install a new puppet to repeat the process. I have, in every sense, completely rigged the system. But like Sisyphus reaching the top of a mountain, I had nothing left Ooh. to struggle against. And so too did I lose my interest. So I made a royal decree to arrest everyone. <laughs> if you're ever interested in Jesus. ending the game, just click prosecute on your main population. Guards start arresting citizens. Then they arrest other guards before being arrested themselves. Prison wardens get jailed and break out of their own prisons. Chaos and pandemonium rule the day as everyone turns on each other and eventually they turn on me. In summary, Songs of Six has a very expansive, detailed, and enjoyable tutorial. At 160 <laughs> hours of playtime, I can't wait to play the actual game. This may not take the spot for game of the year. As we all know that's reserved for churn vector, but it's a very close second. The graphics, the changing of seasons, the music, the scale of the simulation. Considering this is written in Java, I have no words. There's no other game where the line between city builder and sociopathy is so blurred. To demonstrate this, for my second playthrough as the Garfimi, I proposed a novel form of meat production. It's less of a ranch or a pasture, and more of a Tilapi nursery. For reference, at a consumption rate of half an apple a day, a fully grown tilapi child costs us 32 apples, but gives us twice that amount in meat and lever. And once they're adults, we arrest, execute, and butcher them. The Holy tilapi crap. child to tilapi soup pipeline is highly effective. And while my humans don't agree Jesus. with cannibalism because they're bigoted chugs, like, can't grasp the richness. This richness. is like God uh, promised Neverland shit. <laughs> yes of Garfimi culture, their stomachs can't complain. So, what have we learned today? Oh One, God. prisoners are the ultimate cash crop. Labor is a resource, and so are they. Two, look past people and their differences, and see them instead as a source of protein. Three, much like real life, retirement is economically unfeasible, and exists only as a carrot and stick to motivate the working class. I give this game my highest recommendation. I give it no days of food out of we're about to starve. And, because it's mainly one guy and not a corporate entity, I can just ask for a sale. If you're interested, it's 20% off on GOG and Steam for the rest of April. The first hundred to use the link win a free chemical castration or prefrontal lobotomy. Terms and conditions may apply. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. Oh my One gosh. Thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. That is... <laughs> Do you see one of the patrons was just named Ah Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you just left it all in. <laughs> Why not? We've got a lot of patrons. Yeah. Just a lot. It out, yeah. Gosh. Like the last five minutes is nothing but patrons. It's still in the A's on the left side, man. That is yeah. crazy. Uh, bees. Yeah. Okay. My God. What the? <laughs> There's some people with just huge ass names. Yeah. It, 
<laughs> Imagine having to read all these names out. Remember when I used to do the reads at the beginning of like all the people who just joined up? Yeah. Imagine me having to do this like it's just like Bonario, Boney I G, Boogie, Boogie R W R X I T H, Booker, Boomstick Commando, Booty Bones, Booty Liquor, Four Twenty, <laughs> Booze Killington, uh, Board Cake, Boris, Born to Wide, Boron Eleven, Boronium, Botanus, Boton, uh, Boton Pyros. We would be here for like the entire day and probably still have to do a couple more. <laughs> yes. I mean, we have nowhere near as many supporters as, as the one and only Seth. Me, I think we have I, uh, 300, no, 400. There's a oh, whole lot of Nicks in there, too. I just saw that. <laughs> hold on, let's let's go back. Oh, dude. Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Also, these two. That's a problem. Okay. Oh, hey, there's some Nathans there. Nathaniel Hood, Nathaniel Daly, Nathaniel Decker, Nathaniel Long, Nathaniel W. Nathan Ross. Wow. Uh, Nathan Smith. Nathan Warapidboonwit. Damn. Piper No. Nathan Perne or Pinnell, Nathan Kennard. Where are the Knicks? Wow, there are a lot of. Okay. Starting with Nicholas, Nicholas Before. I wouldn't uh, try to read all these out because they Nicholas Bafuri, Nicholas Bison, Nicholas Caldwell, Nicholas Calvert, Nicholas Finnan, Nicholas Hillblum, Nicholas Hong, Nicholas Indre Indrahus, Nicholas. Klinger, Nicholas Kratzer, Nicholas Lucas, Nicholas M, Nicholas Peterson, Nicholas Terrell, Nick, Nick, Nick Baird, Nick Burns, Nick Duncan, Nick Fleck, Nick Fogwell, Nick Haynes, Nick J, Nick Johnson, Nick Kota, uh, Kotasek, Nick L, Nick Lewis, Nick Mott, Nick Potter, Nick Pujols, Nick Stokes, Nick the Brosa, Nick Usenko, Nicken, Nicholas, Nick Nack Z Man, Nico, <laughs> Nicholas Del Del Monte. Uh, oh my God. Nico used to be something that a lot of people would call me back in like middle school. Nicky, Nico, uh, Nico, Nico, Nico Van, uh, Ryzen, Nicholas, Nicholas uh, G, Nicholas Gerard, Nicholas Le uh, Lorette guy, Nicholas Lavoy, Nicholas Mascar Mascaro. I think that's pronounced Lavoie. Lavoie, sorry. Lavoie, yeah. Nicholas Mascaro, Nicholas Moore, Nicholas Seguet, Nick, uh, and then we got the Nicoles. So, yeah. Wow. Very popular name is Nicholas. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Damn. This is, this is insane. So... Yeah, my mom basically said that whenever she was originally going to name me, my name was going to be Andrew at first. But... That'd be... She discovered that everyone else was naming their kids Andrew around that time. And sure enough, I have a lot of friends my, around my age named Andrew. So Andrew is my middle name. Uh, and then she named me Nicholas, and then guess what happened? What? Everybody else named their kid Nicholas as well around that time. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's a whole lot of other Nicholases. Nicks. I remember I was so named I, at... I know I had a kid in my same grade that was my friend his name was Nicholas McGregor hmm. and uh, then I definitely met at least like six or seven other Nicks in my time since then being around and I've heard of a lot of Nicks yeah me I <sighs> there were no other Nathans in my school but there was another there was another Hamilton there was an Ash and funny enough, her first name was Ashley, which was my sister's name. So I had a girl in my class. Her name was Ashley Hamilton. I was Nathan Hamilton. And there were people who asked, like, are y'all related? No. No, we were not. We were not even close to being related. Weirdly enough, don't you have a sister named Ashley? That's what I was saying. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and her, na her last name is uh, Dickinson right now. It's going to be Fields here soon. Uh, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know, man, I've, 
Hey, we watched all the credits, so... <laughs> Finn! Woo, 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 woo. So, yeah. That was uh, Seth with Songs of Six uh, Review, Deranged Edition. Oh, boy. The game looks awesome. I just don't think I'm ever probably going to try it because it looks like it's probably going to overwhelm me if I try it. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. It's the kind of thing I wouldn't mind seeing another video on for sure, though. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. I, I'd be down for that. But, all right. Anywho, I think that is going to do it. So, until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Nick, if you didn't know that by now. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> we'll see y'all in the next one. Take care. Peace.